All right, friends, thank you so much for joining us. Looks like we have 14 people on and we're a couple minutes after, so. Right. What do you think, Christina? I think we can get started. Well, hello and welcome everyone to the annual Kalamazoo Food Waste Symposium. Usually we would be all together celebrating in person, especially on a beautiful day like this. Uh, however, we're still happy that we are able to connect with you, even if it's in a virtual format this year. Uh, before we get started and move forward, uh, I'd like to introduce myself and Lizzie. We'll be, uh, we'll be your facilitators for this session uh, and for the rest of the week. So uh, my name is Christina Petrovska and I work at Kalamazoo Valley Community College as Food Systems Program Coordinator. Uh, and Lizzie, would you like to briefly introduce yourself before we move forward? Sure. Thanks, Christina. Hi, my name is Lizzie Luxinger, and I am Program Coordinator of Community Culinary and Nutrition. So welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, we're so glad you have chosen to join us today. This year's theme for the Food Waste Symposium is Plant Forward, and it focuses on celebrating plants in our lives and in our diets. We hope that you enjoy the sessions that we're offering this year. The Kalamazoo Food Waste Symposium inspires and empowers greater Kalamazoo communities to honor our agricultural history and heritage cuisines and celebrate good food, work together to build, build a just and healthy future for all. Uh, so this event is a collaboration between our Kalamazoo Valley Museum and the Bronson Healthy Living Campus that are both part of the Kalamazoo Valley Community College. Um, with that being said, let's get started with today's session. Today, I want to introduce our uh, instructor, Brenna. Uh, Brenna is the owner of Collection of Flowers. Uh, she has loved being outside and nurturing plants her whole life. She teaches some of her other classes at the Food Innovation Center. Um, her passion for herbalism stems from a conglomeration of and deep appreciation uh, for naturalism, anthropology, and history. Brenna also finds great pleasure in empowering others to tap back into age-old medicinal practices and is a proponent of sustainable foraging, foraging for generations to come. With that being said, welcome, Brenna. Hi, thank you. Um, it's really nice to have all of you here. I'm not used to not seeing any of you, but I know you're there and I'm really, I'm really glad you're here. And I know that there's gotta be some kids in the audience and I don't know how old you are, but if you can, I know there's a little chat bar. So if you can help your parents, I'd be able to help you um, and see if you can tap um, and say what your favorite plant or flower is and what your age is. And if you're older and you're just here to get some recipes, hail too. So I'm Brenna, um, Brenna Pixley. I am, I'm from the Kalamazoo area. I used to live in Three Rivers when I was a kid. And that's a little bit more of a rural setting. Um, and I, I really love living in Kalamazoo. I have, um, um, I call it a micro farm. So I have a couple of beehives. I have um, five chickens in my little flock. And I have um, a bunch of raised beds, which I grow my um, herbs and vegetables in. So I love doing that. Um, I also teach at Tillers International. If anybody's interested in learning a lot of more agrarian lifestyle, um, like back to the salt of the earth kind of classes, um, I have um, classes there too. So I, <clears throat> today I'll be sharing um, how to make herbal sodas. And I'm just, I love everything about plants and everything about herbs and it's just, it's been a craze in the world. I feel like soda is just this topic and it's just kind of, it's everywhere. So every, every gas station you go to, now um, you can get your soda pop. So now the, the um, popularity of bubbly water, I just feel like everybody always has it on their shopping list or at a party um, and some really fun ways to um, make yourself so does at home, the, the, I would say that it's endless possibilities on what you can make. So we're going to, yes, please, Lizzie. So I just wanted to say we have a response from an attendee and we have Braxton that's out there listening in Hi, and he says his favorite plant is apple and uh, Liz is also joining us and her favorite flower is lavender. Ooh. So we have two kiddos in the audience and we have fans of lavender and apple. 
We have the lavender right here, friends. And apple is a staple here. Love My it. daughter's name actually means apple. So. Aw, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so if we, um, if you want to go to the, um, the slideshow. Absolutely. We're probably going to be toggling back and forth, everybody in the audience between the slideshow and presentations too. So, so how's that looking? Right over here. Perfect. All right. So next slide. Um, so the first time anybody ever put bubbles into water, um, forced carbonation was in 1767. So that was a really, really long time ago. Um, so humans have been enjoying that for a long time. So um, this guy, Joseph Priestley, he actually was a, was a chemist who found a lot of gases. So he actually um, discovered oxygen and nitrogen um, and he also thought that this could be a health beverage. So here it's kind of might be hard to see how it actually works, but this is the first apparatus that made bubbles in water. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's me. I went through some of that already, so great. Okay, so these are just some names that people have for soda. So there's just so many. So. In um, our region, everybody kind of calls it, you know, Christina or Lizzie, what people call it around pop. here? Pop. Most people call it pop. Um, <laughs> it's just fun to say pop. So seltzer, fizzy water, fuzzy. My mom called it fuzzy water the other day, and I was like, I'm adding that. So bubbly, soda, effervescence, which that's a fun word to say, too. A good one. Um, pop and uh in europe a lot of people if you go out to if you're having dinner they will ask you do you want water with gas or without so uh it's that as much around here so oh i just wanted to add like uh learning english in my country in macedonia we always use also like sparkling yeah i'm just like why is that sparkling now? <laughs> <laughs> that's what i call it mostly too so do you guys call it there, Macedonia? You guys call it sparkling? Uh, the actual word in Macedonia is gaziran. Oh, <laughs> and so I just wanted to say real fast that so we also have Cecilia, age six, joining us, and she likes oranges. So Ooh. there's that yeah. too. Yes. Okay. My other child's name it means orange. Which is <laughs> Um, so, and my little, my kid, when he was little, he called it ouchy water because the bubbles were sharp. And then the last one is supposed to say carbonated, carbonated water. So nice. Okay. Next slide. And so does anybody know what kind of drink you can type it in there? If you know what kind of plant this is or what kind of soda we make out of this plant. Mm. Anybody brave enough to put it in the chat? It's non-caffeinated. The, the, the word in the screen is sassafras. Sassafras. Well, Root beer, we just got an answer of. Root beer, yes, very good. <laughs> sassafras is a native plant that grows around here. It can grow in a small shrub or it can grow into a very tall tree. I put an example of that very tall tree up there. Um, it's actually one of the first plants if there's a fire or land is cleared, sassafras is one of the first hedge, hedge plants that pop up. And I bet some of the kids out there will know how to identify this plant because of the three different types of leaves, which is a very interesting thing that this plant has. I don't really know of any other plants off the top of my head that have three different style leaves. And the easiest one to check for is, we, I like to call it the dinosaur foot. That's the bottom left picture. You can really see the little dinosaur foot right there. One is also the elongated oval. And then the other one, it looks like a mitten like the shape of Michigan. So um, sassafras 
I have a few different ones here. It smells really spicy. Orange it has that orange color. It's just that that quintessential flavor that's in um, root beer. So another interesting fact is um, sassafras used to be one of the biggest exports that the United States had for a long time. Um, but then there was a little bit of controversy with this chemical um, called saffron in it. But um, there's, I want to say that a lot of um, scary news got put out about sassafras and that sassafras was bad. But scientists, um, they just isolated a one part of this plant and did the testing with just one part of it and put lots and lots and lots of this plant into small test subjects. And even if you were to drink, I think they said if you were to drink 34 quarts or something crazy like that, that you might have some ill effects. But people in Appalachia and Native Americans have been using this in springtime as a tonic. So it's all, it's really good to get your blood moving. It's purifying for your skin because it, the toxins come out of your skin. So it's great, great, great time to make root beer. So. Love it. Yes. So what's in root beer? So I have my pot right here. I'm going to turn my, my um, electric skillet or electric heater on right here, over here. Pardon me. And Brenna, we have another kiddo joining us. We have Sydney, who is 11, and their favorite plant is lavender, just FYI. We have that here, too. Mm. See, that, that's something that goes back a very long time that people have just been enjoying since time has been written down. I love lavender. Before. Yes. So um, I'm going to start with some sassafras see i picked this sassafras years ago and this is the root and um it's still good it's still i've only kept it in a paper bag and it's very aromatic it's a little bit harder to break oh maybe not this one was it but i like to just break it up in chunks and usually you don't have to worry about over harvesting sassafras because it's a very abundant plant very very abundant I always like chew on the plant when I'm out wandering and find it. Is that okay? <laughs> if you're identifying it correctly, yes, it is. Okay. It has this quality that, um, like the leaves, I, it tastes like Fruit Loops to me, the leaves do. They're so good. Yeah. They're, it's, they're very gooey and juicy. Um, it's called demulsant. So they help with digestive enzymes and everything to get coated in the inside. Love it. Good snack in nature. Yes. Yeah. Thirst quencher. If you're on a hike, if you're on a big run and you're mm. like really thirsty, you could eat some sassafras because it helps with the saliva. Good tip. So the, this right here is um, the green twigs from the branches of the sassafras right now. And I was out taking a walk and these were kind of just jetting onto the trail. So I just kind of snapped them off because they were kind of in the way anyways. So. I like a lot of sassafras flavor. I'm putting those in. The next thing here is this really cool plant. It's kind of an exotic. This is called star anise or anise. It smells a little bit like licorice. And you could also use licorice if you have that too, licorice root. I'm gonna put a couple of those in. The most luxurious thing we have here, Christina got me some vanilla bean and I'm surprised my child let me use it because he just was sniffing it for a long time. <laughs> it needs to be cut up though. So I'm gonna use my cutting board and my knife to roughly chop this up. And you know what? I sometimes when I'm making drinks or any kind of recipes, I don't have exactly everything. I don't really worry about it too much. I just I just use what I have and I feel good about it. That's something I always say to my students. Use what I have and feel good about it. So oh, here goes vanilla beans. Vanilla extract works too. Um, okay, so I have that. What else should I put in it? And the recipe is up on the next slide. So um, you don't have to put that up now, but anybody who's listening, we're gonna share these recipes. So if you wanna write them down, you can, but you can also just listen and enjoy and then get the recipes later. 
So here's this lovely mint. I think this is spearmint, right, Christina? I think so, yes. And this was grown at, um, at the, FIC, the Food Innovations Campus in the greenhouse. So I don't mind using the stems, so I'm gonna. I love the rough top. I feel like so often in culinary, we get way too focused on like making everything look fancy and perfect, but it's nice to just see you like chop it up, break it up with your hands, throw it in the pot. Like this isn't a stressful endeavor. Oh no. And kids, the thing is too, the great thing is we can just with herbs too, we can just do it with our hands. Yeah. I love that. We're just a fun, fun thing is when we're, when we're sorting and going through our herbs, it's called garbling, hmm. garbling our herbs. And everybody's probably familiar with this one, ginger, very warming, great, great flavor note for a lot of different, um, old time herbal soda recipes call for ginger, almost everyone. So ginger would even be in use. They were importing it for a very, very long time. So this calls for crushed ginger, but chopping's good too, because I might need to stand up to crush it like that. But we're just gonna go with a rough chop. And the reason why I am leaving it kind of big is because we're going to strain it. So if we have little itty bitty particles, it's sometimes they can get in, caught in your throat. Makes me think of mulein. Those gets like the plant that I make tea with sometimes that has like little spiny bits. You really need to strain it out. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not familiar with that plant. Take my stickers off my plant because you don't want to put the stickers in the compost. Right. Good tip. So mm. I'm going to juice this lemon. I'm not going to put the rind in this. So. Well, one of you um, be so lovely as to look at my recipe and see if I'm missing anything in there. Yeah. I know one thing that my son and I went to go pick yesterday. So this is one of my favorite flavor notes. So this, because traditionally Americans would use um, winter uh, birch, birch bark, which is very winter green flavors, but this is winter green. A plant mm. that grows in, they grow, um, usually next to water and next to in like pine kind of deeper forest. There's a lot in the UP and this are so good. If anybody ever had the, the gum called tea berry gum, also known as partridge berry, so good. And my kid loves picking it. So since I don't have birch bark and when sassafras was outlawed, they had to use winter green. Wow. All right, let's do a quick rundown of all of the ingredients. Let's recap what you have in the pot and think about what we may be missing. So on your ingredient list, I see 10 cups of cold water. There's one quarter cup of sassafras root or bark. We have our crushed ginger. We have our birch bark powder or you're using your replacement ingredient today. We have dandelion or burdock root. We have star anise. We have some mint and then sugar, or you provided alternatives of cane, molasses, uh, brown sugar, maple syrup, honey, sorghum, or any kind of caloric sweetener. And then finally yeast, um, which you have yeah. as like an ale yeast or wild yeast. Yep, yeah, that sounds great. Perfect. I also foraged which is really fun to add to your foods is I forage some dandelions and dandelions are not native and they're everywhere, but you just have to be aware of where they're growing because a lot of, they love to grow where pesticides or road pollutions are. So you want to just make sure you're getting your dandelions from a good source and you don't want to add too much of this. And I'm, I, I'm using the root here because it's a, it's a bitter plant. So little taste buds might, might not like the bitter as much, but you can eat these greens in a salad if you want. Yeah. And Brenna, we have another, uh, actually a couple other friends joining us. It says here, hi, my name is Samantha and I'm watching with my brother, Luke. 
My favorite flower is kiwi and I am 12. And Luke's favorite flower is the double diamond pearl yarrow and he is 10. Wow. Mind blown. <laughs> I have never seen a kiwi flower and I love yarrow. It's something that herbalists use just, it's one of their top five, if not three most useful herbs. And I do have a kiwi here. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, and Samantha. We have Yes, and we have yarrows in all different colors at the gardens at the Food Innovation Center. So if you're to join us for some of our um, in-person classes next year or later in the fall, you might see some of the beautiful different colored yarrow. So I like to use mason jars because they have the cups. Most of them have just like the measuring right there. Less dishes is fun, <laughs> fun for mom or anybody who's washing the dishes. I'm just getting the water out right now. I don't know about you, Christina, but I am really tired of doing dishes. <laughs> yeah, the less the less I can use or the more like I can multi like task in the same dish, the better. Agreed. Yeah, and I love this concept. It's kind of like, you know, we so often talk about making salads in a mason jar and making your vinaigrettes in a mason jar. And, you know, they're so useful on so many different levels. And yeah, the measurements are there. They're great, Absolutely. sustainable container. You can reuse. I use them as drinking glasses too. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, I actually took most of my sassafras out because it's kind of delicate. So I put it in the, in the um, I'm gonna boil this on, um, I'm gonna bring it up and then I'm gonna um, simmer it for 15 minutes. All right. We're gonna tuck that away for a while. Now Brenna, is there um, an advantage to using distilled water or spring water or tap water? What kind of water would you recommend? Um, some of the yeast can be a little more delicate to uh, things that are in city water. Um, I use spring water on that because somebody had gifted it to me. Um, but if I was not, I would probably just use reverse osmosis cool. or that's what I use to drink um, or tap. I mean, tap's fine too. If that's what you have, you just use what you have, right? And cool. Good about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's on the back burner. Let's say, can you please set a timer for 15 minutes for me? Yep, absolutely. You got it, Christina? Yep. I got it. Thank you. Yeah team effort. Let's see, let's see what's next on the Yeah. On the All right. We'll come back. We'll come back to this one. So we have just we'll okay. that. Yep. So moving on. Ta-da. Syrup. So this is this is great. So um Italian soda um, is a really common way of calling this one too. And it's not really Italian. It was actually invented here in the United States in San Francisco. Um, so I remember going to like the mall when I was a kid with my mom, she would get her coffee and I would get myself, you know, my Italian soda. And it was just so fun to be able to like customize it on such a treat. Um, Loved that. and I, um, the, the, right here is where the the just flavor combinations are endless. So, um, Christina, and I know some people on the audience said they love, love to make a lavender one. Mm. Yum. Right now there's this cute little flowers out that are teeny tiny and they're purple and they're called violets and violets make a beautiful purple simple syrup as well. That is so delicious. Well, that's really good because it also has it's, um, a gentle lymphatic cleanser. And so if anybody is um, feeling a little bogged down by the winter time and a little sluggish, it's good to have a little bit of a lymphatic cleanse. So it's a very spring, beautiful spring ephemeral. Um, some other fun things, you can make lemon with just about any herb, which is just divine. So you can have lemon with thyme you can find time at probably every grocery store. It's very easy to grow too. If you go to the farmer's market or you go to any nursery, you can find um, plant little starts of these for 
just a few dollars and you can start your own herb gardens. It'd be really, really fun thing to do this summer and in the spring. This, one of my favorites, it's called lemon balm. Lemon balm, yes, is totally lemony. It's very bright and it's zesty and kind of, if anybody knows what Murphy soap smells like, it smells like that kind of too. <laughs> So lemon balm with, um, with lemon and another thing, uh, here's some more mint. That would be good too. Um, what else was on my list over there? Do you remember? Can you yeah. See so you have lavender, you have strawberry lime, strawberry kiwi, lemon and herb, uh, and then orange and vanilla. Oh, mm. that one sounds so good. That's yeah. a creamsicle. That sounds good too. Yeah. Um, so in the, in the show notes, there's a recipe um, for a simple syrup, which is um, a boiling down. So when you want to do that, you want to add equal parts, you'd say one cup sugar to one cup water. And then you want to, with your, with your plant material. But today, I, my favorite quick, just like roll with it way to make um, sodas is my go-to here. Guys, this is just, I blend it. I just use all my fresh ingredients and just whiz it. So <clears throat> I'm starting with strawberries and I'm just gonna take the greens off. I'm not gonna worry about that little core in there. So I have my compost down here. Let me put that down here. So I'm gonna take a few of these. It may be easier if you cut them, but. But it's good to know that it works without you having to use a knife as well and just. Oh yeah, there's some good um, smaller for um, knives for kids too, which should, strawberries cut really easy. And for this, I'm using strawberries and strawberries I like to buy organic because I want to tell everybody out there that there's a lot of pesky things that get into our food sometimes and strawberries are the worst. They're um, really susceptible to fungus. Um, so people spray them with a lot of fungicides. Um, it's the number one on the dirty dozen list. Dirty dozen, which is your dirty food. So I asked Christina to please buy me organic strawberries because I'm sure she buys them too. Yeah, and strawberries absorb a lot of it because of the, their texture, they're so soft. And so if it's something that has a harder shell, maybe it won't absorb it as much, but because they're so soft and kind of porous, they do absorb a lot of that, um, uh, whatever they're sprayed with. So yes. um, again, it helps. Okay, so this is looking kind of full, so we're gonna stop right there. Hmm. And I don't know if the attendees can see it, but I just put the list for the Dirty Dozen into chat. Oh, so if they just wanted to go there and review to see what things tend to hold most pesticides. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Lizzie. Yep. So you, something I would like to add if I was making it for myself was this rose water. The so rose water is so, so good. Mm. And you don't really need to add a lot of it. You can also just add a drop or two of this to your coffee or to your water and then just, just a little little dab will do ya. But instead, I'm gonna use my kiwi with my strawberry. And it seems like my pot's starting to boil. Nice, we still got nine more minutes for that. Perfect. So I'm just gonna take the peel off of this kiwi. It's got this beautiful green color inside. They're so delicious. My mouth is like watering right now. Brenna, do you like them when they're uh, really soft or when they're some semi-hard? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, I, like this one's still a little hard. I like them, I like them. I feel like the, actually, the more smushy and the more mushy a fruit is, the more sugar and the sweeter it is. But it's also a lot more fragile. Right. You probably will never find them really soft at the store, but if you kind of let them sit on your counter for a while. Yep. Because those, this comes from very far away. I think you can, people grow them in California where it's warmer, but this is imported. I like to use things that are local as much as I can, but sometimes I just like to indulge once in a while and 
And if anybody ever gets kombucha, like the most famous brand, GTs, they always put kiwi in there. It's a signature flavor of theirs. Mm. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. It's in their mm-hmm. juice mix that they use. Christina taught me how to make kombucha, so. <laughs> Brenna brought, yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful, beautiful. that is. I think Brenna and I for a second considered maybe like adding a little bit of kombucha for this session and we realized it might be might be a little too much for one hour session. But if we have time at the end, we can talk a little bit about it. You can always contact me and I can send anybody a recipe too. And we should do a future session on that, Ristina. I agree. Yeah. Lizzie, what were your favorite flavor combinations? I mean, I loved putting dates. And my kombucha for that like natural molasses kind of mm. sweetness. Um, and I don't know, I did a lot of like ginger and just anything I had available. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah. Okay. I am going to now. I like to, so I like to use, um, things with wider um, holes in them because I can fit my hands in there to clean them or little hands can fit in there or I can fit my blender in there. Nice. This is, this is not a necessary tool for the kitchen, but I use mine all the time. This one wasn't very expensive. So I'm sure you could find them used on eBay if you want to add this to your collection. Um, so I'm just, I added a little bit of water because a little bit of moisture helps everything just to flow when you blend it or puree. So, and if they're not as ripe, they won't puree as well. But you see that? Yeah. There we go. Uh, Brenna, if people don't have an immersion blender, I'm assuming they can just use a standing blender. Where's my, oh, yeah, they can use a standing blender for sure, right here. I love mine. Use it all the time. Heavy, heavy duty there. So I have my strap in my kiwi and I'm going to taste it to see how it tastes without sugar because maybe I don't want to put extra sugar in it today. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Um, I have brown sugar. I didn't have any white sugar. I think I used it for a cake last week for my mom, but, and then I have honey and this is honey from my bees. And for some reason it got crystallized in the basement, but it's still, the honey is still good like this. It will stay for thousands of years. Cause in Egypt, they found honey that was still edible or even in sunken chips that was still good. So honey is very cool. So, I think I'm going to add, what do you think? Well, let's put the honey in the switchel. So let's add sugar here. I like that it's so flexible that you can really add whatever you'd like. So yeah, uh, it's maple syrup season right now. So maple syrup, I bet, would be beautiful. I did make some maple syrup, but I'm, poor. I don't know why I forgot it up here, but it's, I like to, I like maple syrup. If I make it, I like to just use it as itself because sometimes I feel like the flavor once in a while gets lost, but I used it on my fish yesterday and it was really good. Oh, wow. Maybe I'll even add this too. So this is a really fun plant that Herstina gave me. Um, it's called stevia. You might have heard of it. It's a great um, like sugar substitute. So you usually see it in like a powder form, but this is the plant and you can use the plant just the same. So you can make a simple syrup, which is just boiling this with one cup water and then just um, letting it boil down and then you strain it. And it's so sweet. It's like way sweeter. So just be careful because you can go crazy with this. And I feel like- You can find those to grow too by yourself too, if you want to. 
Yeah. And that natural, the flavor from natural stevia processed yourself to me is so much better than the, you know, factory processed stevia. So if you've had a bad experience with stevia, like manufactured, maybe try natural um, because I do think the flavor is improved and it's really versatile and a wonderful flavor. We also have a question from Anne who is asking, can you add banana? And I'm, I'm yes. guessing that to your simple syrup. Um, I don't know if I would cook down the banana, but it would make really, really easy, great for the fun fresh. If you want to use banana, I would use it quick because it tends to turn brown, but it would be very sweet and like a great thing to add. But I would um, maybe just use that one up quicker. Gotcha. As thank a day. you. Yeah, thank you. So now to make it a soda, are we going to put a little bit in the cup here? And you can, if you're worried about little um, seeds and stuff like that, you can always strain it through cheesecloth, which we'll use. Cheesecloth. It's a great thing to have in the kitchen. And I have some different sodas I can have here. One second, I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. I didn't fully add enough water. I love what you were saying earlier, Christina, about how flexible this is. And I, I love that because I think so often in cooking, we get really like caught up in recipes and it, you know, feels like so prescriptive, but this seems very, you know, like open to really like you following your garden or your palate or whatever sounds good to you that day, what's in your house, you know? So what a cool right. way to be creative and like, you know, end product allows for a lot of flexibility. So very cool approach, Brenna, I love this. That's, that's the best way to be. Um, so I have some things, some soda choices here. This one is awesome because to buy things that are pre-packaged, especially bottled water and things like that, Fago is cool because it's from Detroit. And so that's really close. So we're buying something that's not being shipped very far. And it's actually probably the most economical choice out of any club soda. And I forgot to say club soda, but club soda. Um, there's Fago. There's also, this is another local product. This is called LaCroix. Um, this is the blue kind is the unflavored. Or if you want to get, go farther back, there is um, San Pellegrino. So the top of this says $18.99. So that's a long time that's been a company. I already opened up this one. So I'm going to use my Fago. Up oh, and Brenna, this is a 40 minute alarm. I mean, 15 minute alarm for the root beer, but I know you just checked it right now. So well, then I'll just add the sassafras. So now I'm going to add the sassafras. Will you do like a 10 minute? Yep. This is a good example of multitasking, doing two recipes at the same time. I love it. While one is cooking. Yep, we'll do another one for 10 minutes. Perfect. It's also an example of like how some can be fresh with no cooking required and some well, same a bigger batch. Here. So this is it, cheers. Usually I would put ice in here. It got really bubbly. Those strawberries made it kind of go crazy. So, all right, describe its uh, taste, texture, smell. It is a little chunky, but I like it. Slightly like it has a little bit of bite to it, which I like. Um, if you, you can see the strawberries, the kiwi seeds at the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might be a little bit exciting if you drink it with a straw. Like, oh, there's seeds in it. But yeah, like boba. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> A little, a little bit like chia. You can even add a little bit more if that's you want it stronger. So, mm. well, I don't know about everyone else, but I wish I had one. Cheers! So, cheers. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> and it's such a nice treat too because I feel like we it's we have a lot of convenience, a lot of snack. But like the more when you make things yourself, you just appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah. And I know I just love those and it's really fun for a party too and it'd be fun for even kids to make for not that everybody's not really partying right now but when we're partying yeah, yeah. the fun thing to bring as a um thing that somebody can bring as a sharing recipe so um 
this is delicious and I love it. And I just could drink it very often. And I now want to share, um, we're getting closer to the end of the hour. If anybody has any questions so far, feel free to put them in the chat. And we're going to move on to my Switchel um, recipe. So let's go back to the slideshow. You bet. I have a drink. All right. Can you see it? Yep, we can go past this one. So that one was a simple syrup. So this is called Switchel. Has anybody ever? Switchel is really fun to say. And I think the origin of the word is German, but the origins of the drink harkens back to um, like the West Indies, really, really long time ago, probably 15 to six, probably like 1700, 16, even before that, 15 to 1600s. So um, when I make Switchel, Another, uh, well, another um, term for it is like an oxymel. So oxymel is in Latin, oxy means vinegar and mel is honey. So when you usually do like a one-to-one -one ratio of those. And this makes a concentrate as well. So it's also known as haymaker's punch. And you can see this picture, which is just, I love this picture so much. I'm really into old timey things and and this just captures really like the feeling of what it is before mechanization and before machines were used to do the heavy farm labor. It would be such work to make the hay harvest come in. And you have to have the hay or your animals won't survive and you'll have to pay for it. And it's very expensive. So this is a family, there's even a kid in there and they're taking a break. And if you've ever read Little Home, um, Little House in the Prairie books or um, even Farmer Boy, which is my favorite, he has his, um, his mom makes up a, a ginger bug. So when you're out and you're really, really hot and in the sun, you need usually an electrolyte to replenish some of your fluids. And if you were drinking just plain water, your stomach probably couldn't handle mass amounts of it. So by adding vinegar to it, and um, a lot of the time people use ginger, then you can drink a lot more fluids than you would just be able to drink plain water. So this is, vinegar drinks were really cool before sodas, like before flavored sodas were a thing, a lot of people were drinking vinegar infused, but now it's popular is sweet, sweetened things. But I feel like people's palates, like especially kombucha, people are coming back into that sour, earthy, more I know what's in my drink kind of recipes. <laughs> so um, this one is great and this one lasts like forever. So you can just make a big batch of this up and I just keep it in the fridge. Um, cause vinegar doesn't spoil and neither does honey. So my favorite to do this. So I add equal parts. So I'll do, I'll just make sure I shake this up because this is, this is Bragg's. This is the raw, you want to use the raw kind. There's a few, there's a few brands out there, but the best economic wise is to buy it by the gallon. So it's like 20 bucks for a whole gallon of this. So that's pretty good. And what are your thoughts about the mother that's like in the container? Do you save that? Do you use it? Do you toss it? Well, she's kind of coming out right now, but you could use it to make your own apple cider vinegar. Cool. There's, you can look up recipes called apple scrap. So if anybody here likes to gather apples in the fall and they are making, they're making, um, applesauce or anything like pies they can save the cores without the seeds because those have arsenic in them but if they're keeping the peels in the cores and a little bit of this and a little bit of honey or some other sweetener if you're vegan um then you can make your own own vinegar that's very economical cool okay so i have a lot here let's put it in a big one Okay, so I have two cups vinegar. I'm gonna put a whole lemon in there because the lemon, and you wanna use your blender for this because it needs to process the, the peels. So <clears throat> the peel has a lot of flavor in there. And you wanna make this as flavor, most flavor as possible because you're diluting it with water, so. This is a big orange too. So I also had this as organic because since we're using the peel, we want it organic as well. 
but it's not. What other flavor uh, ideas are good, Brenna, for, for the sweet chill? Will you go to my slide? There's some great yeah. ideas. <clears throat> I'm gonna screen share, but she has here, let's see. The first time I learned this, I learned this from my um, my herbal teacher, uh, Jim McDonald, and he told me to infuse berries first with this. And then um, he's a great person to Jim McDonald. So infuse, you can also infuse anything with the vinegar and then add the honey later too. Mm. So what's in here? Berry, any kind of berry, frozen berry, fresh berry, whatever you have is so good. So um, whole lemon and then aromatic herbs. So I can leave the stems in there too, because I'm gonna, um, now right now I'm adding the lemon balm. Mm. Tulsi would also be really good too, if you have any fresh Tulsi. So. And I just use a two big handfuls. This is a lot, because I like the flavor, um, but you don't even have to use any herbs. Maybe I'll add a little bit of thyme in this one. And maybe I'll just add a little bit more lemon because I have it over here. And. Oh, ginger, I almost yum. I almost forgot that one. And this one you do um, want to cut up a little bit because it's quite strong of a root. Okay, so just, and there I just, and if that's in the recipe and you want to omit it or you want more or less of everything, again, it's very flexible. So I'll, find my lid I haven't added the honey yet so I'm gonna just blend this up with the vinegar it's gonna be loud so I'm gonna start on the low setting because it's pretty chunky love those blenders they're like magic. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's probably one thing they didn't have back in the 1800s when they were doing switch all, but yeah. gotta, use our, gotta use our technology and what we have. Yes. Yeah. Available to us. Good point, Christina. There's <laughs> probably a lot of hand chopping. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so that's good. Taste test. Let's see, it's pretty green. This I use a lot of herbs, so I um, I could even do this and strain it too if I wanted. So it just let this sit. Um, and it, I usually use this as a cold infusion, which is just I let it sit in a jar for when I say cold infusion, that means I'm just letting it. Go. The, the ten minute alarm went off for for the root beer. That's perfect. So perfect. Okay. I mean. So this is a really chunky. So I might let this this kind of um, maceration soak for a while. And I'm not gonna have my honey just yet because I want this to soak. So um, you can put it with any lid since this isn't gonna really touch it because it's so far down in the jar. But you, if you're using vinegar, it could corrode, which is like kind of eat up metal, vinegar does. So you could add wax paper or cloth or something under that. And you want to make sure you label everything that you are storing because even the best of us, I always, I forget all the time what I put in random jars. So um, you could put this in the fridge or you could just leave this out on the counter or in your closet or, and this doesn't have to be shaken, but if you wanted to every once in a while, I can give it a little shake. And Brenna, we have a question that came up about uh, what is cold infusion? Do you want to briefly talk so, about like, it? I'm, I'm referring to cold infusion because a lot of infusions, people talk about like when you're making coffee or you make some sort of tisane or you're using tea, you use hot water or hot vinegar or something to um, do that. But um, you don't have to do that with this. And a lot of the times aromatic herbs, which is all the herbs I have here and most of the herbs that are in the spice aisle are very aromatic. And that's actually what's healing about the herbs is um, the aromatic qualities which are also known as volatile oils and those can be lost sometimes when you add heat so when you add a cold infusion it tastes better it just takes a little bit longer so this is going to be really good yeah like root beer is a hot infusion in a way 
Yeah. Because you're heating right. it in this one. It's not yep. heated. So I'm going to put this in my compost. Okay, then let's go back to. And I just want to say that if uh, if uh, participants, if you have questions coming up, please feel free to type them in the Q and A session section or in the chat box. Uh, we're hoping to to address those at the very end as we're kind of wrapping up uh, in the next eight minutes. Okay, so I have this. I didn't use as much water. I didn't use ten cups, but I can also just add more water. Um, you can do less water and add it afterwards. So. I'm going to take this. Um, you can either use your strainer or your, um, actually, I'm going to get this. This is hot, so I want to put it back. You got to be careful. And unplug your heater. Get your cheesecloth. And you can reuse this. I wash mine all the time and just keep reusing it. So it's a good investment. It really is. And you can find this in the cooking aisle and even small grocery stores carry this. So the reason why you could use this just by itself, I'm gonna actually use this as a watch this is my trick. <laughs> level that out so you could just use the um the screen but you can't really squeeze and get it's going to be hot so i want to be careful when i'm squeezing but it's a good tip because you want to extract all the liquid and flavor out of the whole ingredients that you have in there you do and when i made my last root beer see this is kind of light right here i even boiled my my stuff right here and then I just put a lid on it and then I let it sit overnight because that's a really good trick if you just if you're making any kind of infusion and or decoction as herbalists call it too um you put all of your plant material in here and then yeah you do your boiling and then you just let it soak but for today mm -hmm. see I only have a little bit that came in there so let's see Right, especially since the the sassafras root that you had was so dry, I feel like the longer it probably sits in water. Yep, I'll show you my other one um, that I I have one that I already made, so I'm gonna show you guys that afterwards. And so oh, nice. right now I'm gonna add this too that makes it darker. So I didn't add my sugar yet. And this kind of tool right here, if nobody, if you guys don't can. You can always find these with the canning supplies. This is an indispensable tool to have in the kitchen. It fits on any size mason jar or a cup. It's great. Good suggestion. Nothing like a good funnel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is still hot, so it's good to um, add sugar into hot liquids because it dissolves a lot faster. So. I don't know exactly how much I said to put in here, but I'm going to add like half a cup. So it's at the two and a half mark right now. And you're adding, uh, you've chosen molasses, right? I've chosen molasses. And this is made from a plant called sorghum. And it's really high in iron and calcium. It's a little bit stronger flavor. It goes so wonderful with, um, with root beer though. I love molasses. Mm -hmm. And molasses are the sugar in here. So we're gonna add yeast to this, which is what this kind of soda, we're not gonna add any sparkling water to. This is gonna make its own bubbles. So there's a lot of wild yeast on plants that you forage. So you don't even need to go out and buy any kind of yeast at all because most plants, that are organic or plants that you find in the wild um, already have a lot of them on there. So I have this here. One thing I can even do, it's a little hot, but when you have a jar like this, you can even shake it. So you want to make sure that your 
like let's call this like your tea. Yeah, your tea that you make for your root beer tea is is room temperature. You want this not to be too hot because then it will kill your yeast that we're adding. But if you just let this sit like this with the top off, like this for a while, then the natural fermentation, if you didn't want to add yeast, you would just drape this with your cheesecloth. Make sure the flies don't get into it and set it on the counter for a few days. So I have a few yeasts here and I, I get my yeast from, we have happen to have an amazing selection of yeast at Bell's um, home brewing store. They have just unlimited amounts of yeast there. And this is like 90 cents. So you can make a lot of root beer. So then I wanna add, um, so you'll have more liquid than this too if you're, when you're making the full 10 cups. So when this is um, when this is room temperature, you're gonna add an eighth of it, eighth of a teaspoon. So I only have a quarter here, but I sometimes add a little bit more because I just I like everything more. So I'll add this to that. Then I will take my jar, my swing top jar. So you don't need this kind of fancy jar. You can put it in a plastic bottle that has a little bit of room if you squish the bottle down a little bit. Um, but this is fun, you can use this, you can use old. So this one, it's just an old, people just give these to me because they say I use them. So if you put the word out, you might have some friends that have these too. This is just ginger beer from, um, from Trader Joe's. And this was another jar that had some Irish cream in it. So we have a question about yeast. It says, does the yeast wash off when you clean your forage plants and herbs? I, I bet there will be some left, but I would just add a little bit that that wasn't cleaned off. But I mean, if you're boiling, boiling and boiling it, it's going to kill almost all of it anyways. So that's why I add yeast to mine. You can do some sort of fermentation like this and just leave it with wild. I mean, the vinegar not in here, but you can just add, make the tea like we did and just steep, steep the herbs in the cold infusion. And that would, that would make sure that the wild yeast was still intact. And if anybody has any questions about any of this, feel free to contact me personally and we can talk about wild yeast and everything like that. So, I have this. I have another thing, my favorite other thing here is my other set of funnels. So I have a bunch of these. This, if you wanna get really um, serious, if you're making wines or making other kind of drinks and you really wanna keep your stuff sterile or you're the type of person that wants to make sure you have all your ducks in a row. But with this, you're drinking it quick. So you don't need this. I use this, this is called Sandy Star. You can also get this at Bell's, it's very affordable. I use this for my beer making and my wine making, but I wanted to just talk about that. So um, you would just use this for here. So let's just say we have this. You can also sterilize things in the oven as well. So. What a beautiful color. What does it smell like, Brenna? It smells like the woods. It smells like ginger cookies. Mm. molasses cookies mm. which you could use the rest of your ginger molasses for that mm -hmm. beautiful so when you have the big the full 10 cups how we discussed you probably have two of these full two of these little babies like this and this one I sat on my, so I had, um, then I put my yeast in it. Close it tight because you don't want to be shaking it. So these are cool because, so this is very, very old technology. This ring right here, this gasket allows a little bit of air to escape and the drink still bottle because, um, I put in the notes too that like you want to avoid um, geyser bombs because 
this <laughs> is something that I have, every time I make root beer, like we go pop and it like goes woo crazy and shoots on the ceiling and goes wild. So that's cause I let it go for like a month or two. So you want to, if you don't want to be crazy mess everywhere, um, then you, you should drink it faster or just be aware. And you could, you could do this poop every once in a while and let the air out. So you let this sit on your counter for a few days, two days, three days, and then you put it in your fridge ready to drink. And I, this is, this will, this is the, I haven't tested it yet. And this, and this, I've made root beer a bunch, but this one I haven't tested yet. So hopefully it has some fizz to it. Whoop! Hear that? <sighs> See really close. Oh yeah. Yeah. That could have gone many other different ways, but. <laughs> See how wild this is? This is absolutely perfect drink i'm proud right now yay oh pour nice yourself stuff. a glass it looks wonderful <laughs> yeah so, so this you don't need that you don't need to thin this and it will get wilder and crazier and like fizzier and fizzier so if you want to let it sit for a long time i would maybe just use less yeast or just like a little bit you know what has a lot of yeast is wild raspberry cane so if you go in the woods you see the purple canes the shoots with the with the spikes on them and there's like a little film of white on them that's wild yeast so, mm. so brenna uh it's really cool because one of the drinks so this one doesn't need any extra water or anything carbonation kind of produced itself yep. then with the strawberry simple syrup we use sparkling water and then with the switchel uh, i'm assuming that you use a little bit of that and then add sparkling water or regular water. Um, oh, with the switchel? Yeah, I usually just like um, use it as like a Gatorade concentrate. So like I say, it's like my natural Gatorade. So if you know somebody that's like, if you have somebody that's sick or you like somebody that's in labor or just going on a, on a walk or anything like that, it's really great to make that for them. And you just um, pour a little bit a little top in a cup and then a little bit of ice if you want it and then the rest water so here's cheers to my root cheers. beer i really hope all of you enjoy these flavors and like making these for yourself all season and into the summer and if you guys want to share with me or share with uh, lizzie or Christina or just um kvcc and we'll hopefully find it so and lizzie thank you for sharing brenna's contact in the chat box so um if you wanted to reach out uh, to Brenna directly, her uh, email and also Instagram is on uh, on here. And uh, thank you for joining us for the first live uh, Food Waste Symposium session. We have uh, one more session for today at four o'clock. It's on making tamales. So if you wanted to join, um, there's still time to sign up on the same website. And then we have uh, we have more sessions tomorrow through Saturday. So we hope to see you again. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.